Hello and welcome to this video about the OLC Pixel Game Engine Expansion UI version 1.2. So, as some of you might know, I use the one-known coder Pixel Game Engine for a lot of prototyping and programming, mostly for fun. So for that reason, I have made an expansion called the OLC Pixel Game Engine Expansion UI version 1.2. And I've of course used this to create a bit of different stuff. In this case, I have created the Pixel Game Engine expansion UI. So let's take a look at what I've created with this. In this case, what I've uploaded and which you can get all the code from, links are in the description below, is three different things. First, I created a single screen menu with buttons, drop downs, and sliders. Then I've created a multi-screen menu with the same items. And then I've created a fully fledged game to demonstrate all the things you need to know how to use the UI to its full potential. This game features everything that a game should feature to work. It features animations, as you can see the little ball driving around here. It features custom graphics, that is an overlay to the UI. It features a high score list which will save the data from each game and will load it in again. It also features the ability for you to make a username and to save that username. The game itself is fully fledged as you can see you have the ball that will move around and you have the ability to play. You also have the ability to choose for how long you want to play. Since in this case the game is set to only 30 seconds, but you could easily set it to be longer if you wanted to. What you will also notice is that whenever someone scores a point, the ball will count down and the timer in the button will not move. Now this is a bit embarrassing, but apparently I can't multitask, so I can't both talk and win this game. And sadly the time ran out before I got even a single goal. And as you can see here, it decided that my point of 0 versus the AI of 2 is better than my point of 1 versus 4, but worse than my 3 versus 4, which makes sense. And of course it comes up with a bit of information here that the PC won. The game reset and we can play again. But as I said, it has a lot of settings. Some of these settings you can see in here. For instance, we have a bar in which we can type our name in. And if I do that, change it to my normal name, it will do that and it will update all the way through. And next time I play the game, if I have exited correctly, it will remember this. It also contains a standard slider which will move between the value of 100 at the top and 0 at the bottom. I'm using some extra math to gain this value here. You'll see that in a bit. It also features what's called stepping sliders, which means that instead of moving fluidly like this, it will only move between specific steps. Now, one thing that we can also do is we can choose to use one of these stepping sliders to turn off these special graphics, or on again if you want to, or turn animation off, as you can see the ball no longer moves. And now it's on. So if we don't have the graphics on here, what you'll notice is that these buttons here, the slider, will actually tell me directly what value it has. You also see this one up here. This is the raw image that you will gain if you only use the UI without any graphical overlay. This is very functional for a lot of things. And here we have the text field, which will demonstrate how to be used. And what you can see here is that I push the D button. You also have the ability to make some sort of toggle button, a button that will toggle on debug mode. In debug mode you can see the identification number of each and every single object. This ID can be used to call data from them. For instance, we will get use the get text field string function and use the ID 16 to get whatever is typed into this text field. These text fields currently support a to set keyboard input, the numpad, 
and the normal number input on the top. And of course the system used different commands to move back and forward. What is also awesome is that these commands that are used to move between the different screens can also be used to make special commands such as a command to actually exit the game. So right now I just deleted everything that was before for the punk game and just put this in instead. Now let's look at the code first, well the example of the code, sorry. As you can see here, this is a bit of a simple program really. It has a text field where we can put in text. It has some buttons here we can press, but these buttons are also bound to the keyboard, so I can press them without being there. As you can see, it prints out a command string that actually are telling us right now that we are pushing a button with the command left key, we are also pressing a button with the command down key, and a button with the command right key. But it would also tell us if we are just hovering a key, and it will say that that's what we are doing. We could also use sliders, just as before. We have A button, and then we have this, A drop down. That contains the exit command, so let's take a look at this. So we are defining the OLC pixel application, and including the pixel game engine and the pixel game expansion UI. Setting up our screen size as always, and making the class. Within this class, we will need a OLC UI container. In this case, we will call it my UI. The UI container is a single page of UI elements. In the onUser create, we can simply just start and add all the buttons we want to this system. In this case, I will add the button called A button you saw on the screen. I'll add the four keys for WASD movement. And I will bind them to the keyboard keys, as you can see here. I also add a drop down. This drop down was black on the top and had blue sub buttons. Its name was main, and the sub buttons was first, second, and exit. And they run the commands of command one, command two, and exit command. I also added the text field, as you can see, a slider. A slider with specific steps, that's called a stepping slider, and a range slider, which will be a range from 10 to 19, ignoring those numbers here, and just goes, um, what's called, evenly divided between it. And lastly, I also added a UI field. The UI field is something that will make sure you can be safe from pushing things behind your UI that you don't want to. If you have UI parts that are only graphical, but with no function, you can add a UI field behind them. Then within the onUser update, you simply call the MyUI and update it with time. This will take care of every single interaction that is between your mouse or your keyboard and the buttons, the text fields and sliders on the screen. So you don't have to do anything really to get them to work. If you want input from them, you could for instance take the my UI has command exit. This will ask the UI, are there any command called exit currently being used? And then we here set a flag for check for hover. I've set it to false because I don't want to exit just because I hovered over the button that has the command. I'll only do it if I press it. Then return zero, exit the program. Now if you want to show those UI elements, you can call the my UI draw objects. Of course, if you have a graphical overlay, you don't have to do this at all. And then we also have uh, the ability to say my UI is the mouse in the UI. And it will simply return true or false depending if the mouse is hovering UI or not. And lastly, we have the ability to use the my UI get all commands which will return the long command string you saw in the button. And you could use this to phrase to true things or send it off to other things that you'd like to use. Now, as I mentioned, there's also a multi-page example. And it's not really that much more advanced to use the multi-page 
and this is to use the single page. And this is actually one of the main reasons for this UI system, aside from making the buttons easy. I also want it to be easy to have multiple pages. So just as before you define your pixel game engine, but instead of taking a container, you will take the UI state control unit. You can call it the same, there's no difference here. But then you also need a single program stage. And you can call it whatever you want. I've chosen to call it current stage because that makes sense. And I've set it to main menu. Again in the on user create, you'll set all this up. But this time you'll start by making a vector of program stages. And you'll push in all the stages that you want to have in your system. Now there's a total of 20 different stages to choose from. And they are all mentioned right here at the top of the system. You can see them right here. There are 10 that are already set to some names that make sense, such as inventory, main menu, run program. And then there are 10 that are just some generic names, program stage 0 to program stage 9. And you could use them interchangeable. There is no specific rule on how you use them, but the name is important because if you call this command on a button, it will go to that stage. And that's the next thing we're going to look at. After you made it your vector, you'll push all these stages into the my UI setup function. And then the UI will take care of handling those stages for you. Now, before you could just push the my UI, add new drop down, and you would get a drop down menu. Now you do have to do one thing more. You have to call the my UI add to stage, and then decide what stage you want to add to, in this case, the main menu. And then you can add the drop down just as before. What you should note here is in the main menu, I'm adding the drop down called main. It has a button called stage 1, a button called stage 2, and a button called exit. These buttons have the command of program stage 0, same as this stage, and program stage 1, as this stage, and an exit. This means that whenever we press the, press the button with the text stage 0, we'll go to program stage 0, and stage 1, program stage 1, exit. We will ca cast the command exit. Now, down here I'll just use the add to stage program stage 0, and I'll add a button to that, and add to stage program stage 1. And now you can add as many buttons as you want below this, it doesn't matter. All this do is setting the um, UI handler to this stage temporarily, because as soon as you update, now you won't just set the lapse time, you will also send the current state. And this means it won't really matter which stage you added objects in, as long as the current stage is not changed. Then the UI will handle all the changes for you. We still use it exactly as before when we want to look for commands, but it will only look for the command in the current state. It simply won't care for the other stages. And the smart part is that we can now use a switch system with the current stage, and we can actually make some sort of game logic. In this case, we are moving a ball. If we're in the main menu, you will see a white ball moving, and it will move on both the X and Y axis. If we're in program stage 0, you will see it moving only on the Y axis, or in the program stage 1, only on the X axis. axis. So let's take a look at that. As you can see here, we are in the main menu, and it is moving on the X and Y axis. We have the drop down, and we have these two stages here. You can also see in the button that those are the commands we're calling. So let's go to stage 0. And as you can see, it's only moving on the Y axis. And if we go to stage 1, you can see it's only moving on the X axis. Now this button here, I'll show it in the code in a bit. It has a key bound, a key bound of space. So this means I don't have to click it with my mouse. I could use the keyboard key space, and we go to the main menu. Or search to stage 0. Or stage main menu. And we can exit. All this is fully functional, and the button, as I said, is right here. You can see I'm adding a new button to stage 1, and it has the key space added to it, and the command program stage 0. So it will go to that stage. Now, the link to the GitHub is below. I would highly recommend if you haven't seen one loan coder videos, you should go check them out. I've also put some links in the video below. Have a nice evening and thanks for watching.